Namaskar everyone. Uh, I am uh, very delighted to have you all on our third quarter and nine month FY24 earnings call. This is the second call that we are doing um, and uh, I am very glad with the kind of uh, interest that we have received. I would like to generally update about what's been happening. One is basically that um, the quarter has gone well uh, and they continues to do well as we can see in the coming times. We have done some very interesting things, one of them being a JDA, which is a joint development between uh, two parties at our Puri Hotel. Uh, till this time due to Corona and after because of Cyclone Fawny and then Corona, we were unable to fully take the advantage of the um, uh, property that we have at Sri Jagannath Puri Ji at, uh, next to the temp near the temple. But now we have entered into a JDA which will be basically to make a beautiful heritage five-star luxury hotel and uh, currently having 120 keys but it might be a little more also uh, based on certain uh, final finalities. But it will be more only, not less than 120 and uh, the best part is it is in continuing with our ethos of being a, without taking debt. So there is an infusion by an investor of equity into the company to do the JDA and uh, subsequent details I'll share later on. I'm also very, I'm also very happy that to share that this is the first quarter of fully having brand era, uh, which is now in Mumbai, Bhubaneswar, Nashik, and um, uh, Sambhaji Nagar, and soon opening in Noida, Ayodhya, and other places. And we have seen this, the company has seen a significant boost in ARR. Uh, which I will again further uh, highlight on with this new brand. Well, with that, we are also very pleased that we have opened our uh, first hotel of Kamath Hotels India Limited in a long time in, um, in Jamnagar, the Orchid Jamnagar. And uh, we are also very pleased to be associated and a very key associate of the um, uh, big event that is coming in Jamnagar, that is the wedding that is to take place. And um, um, that's how, uh, you know, they, that's, a, that's a very prestigious moment for us. So the Orchid Jamnagar, along with that we opened the Sambhaji Nagar, um, so that's also something we will take up ahead. Uh, with that, our other things are on target. Uh, I will leave, take it now to Smita Ji, our CFO Madam, who um, recently got a very nice uh, article, uh, which I think we can also share subsequently, it's, uh, as one of India's leading women CFOs, top 10 if I mistake not. So we are very proud that the ethos of my grandfather and father to have um, uh, such able members, regardless of their background and anything else, on pure caliber, and I think Smita Ma'am has been instrumental in the um, way that Kamath Hotel for the last one has turned out. So I hand it over to you, Smita Ji. Thank you, Vishal sir, and Namaskar, everyone. This, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all my investor shareholders for supporting us in our thick and thin times. Secondly, on the financial part, we just wanted to inform you that. Our, as we have committed, we have reduced our debt from 298 crore to 172.5 crores by selling of our, one of the hotels and again we have leased back the same hotel. On the basis of that, we are on the keys are same. Uh, we, it is affected, uh, EBITDA is affected but we are very much sure and confident that in going further, we will maintain the same EBITDA on Q4 basis as well as year on year basis. On consolidated basis, the revenue of Q3 FY24 were up by 3% year on year and stood at 86 crore. This was to the improvement in ARR or annual room revenue across all our properties. EBITDA stood at 26 crore down by 22% year on basis, uh, year on year basis largely due to Three, four uh, major items. One is the revision salary, additional hiring employees for new property that is Jamnagar, Sambhajinagar, Noida, Ayodhya. Along with that, we have increased, uh, due to this, increase in, increase in uh, lease rental also for five properties that is Jamnagar, Sambhajinagar. Just now I mentioned about the ERA Mumbai, which we sold and leased back also. Shimla and Manali, along with the operational expenses towards ERA Nashik, we have upgraded fully this property. That was up by 50% year on year basis Q3, Q4, FY24 standing at 42 crores due to exceptional income earned out of sale of ERA Mumbai. 
On the nine month basis, revenue stood uh, stood at 220 crores, up by 2 percent year on year basis. EBITDA was down by 17 percent year on year basis because of the infusion of new properties as well as new employees. At, and it is standing at rupee uh, rupees 68 crores, while EBITDA margin was 30 uh, was at 31 percent. Patch stood 43 43 crores. With this, we can now open the floor for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Gunit Singh from CCI PL. Please go ahead. Hi sir, thank you for this opportunity. So I would just like to start off with the uh, uh, top line and bottom line first of all. So uh, the performance in terms of top line has been very poor, I mean, here on the EM basis. So if you look at our competitors, for example, like Charlotte Hotels, their top line grew by about 50%, while ours has just grown about 3%. So, I mean, there is not any significant growth there. Sir, your audio is not clear. What... Can you repeat the question? No, we can hear it. We can hear it. I, I got his question. Now, please let him continue. And in terms of bottom line as well, if we look at the profit uh, before tax, uh, if excluding the uh, one-time exceptional item, it has fallen by more than 100%. So, I mean, I would just like to understand uh, the opinion of the management on this. Okay. Um, I, I didn't get actually what fell 100%. Can you please tell again which is that line which you are claiming is fallen 100%? Profit uh, before tax, excluding the exceptional item. Okay. Swetha, uh, I'll answer this first question, which is a valid question. Um, your question is very valid that there is no growth, but it is also that we have always claimed as a company that this year the performance will be flat. Uh, if I have to compare myself to anybody else, it will be prudent to compare myself next year. The reason being that next year is the actual year when whatever efforts we have taken this year will start maturing. For example, the new hotel Jamnagar, Orchid Hotel Jamnagar has opened on 1st of December. So it will take time for the business to increase there. The new hotel of ours, which is Sambhaji Nagar, the era by Orchid Sambhaji Nagar, has just opened on 15th of December. And hence, it will take time for that revenue to come in. Similarly, the new hotel era by Orchid Nashik, which earlier I and I will share with you, for example, Ira. Ira has done Touchwood exceedingly well. Ira ARRs have shot up considerably. For example, in Nashik, we were getting earlier in our same hotel 2100 rupees, 2000 to 2200 rupees ARR. That has shot up to 3600 to 4000 rupees on an average minimum. And on a, a quarterly basis, it's come to 3700. Same way in the case of ERA Mumbai, our ERA Mumbai has gone up by 16% from, five, uh, from um, uh, 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 so I'll give you the exact distinct mistake of that ERA please. And also in the case of Samaji Nagar, a brand new hotel, ERA Mumbai, we are getting an ADR of 4700. So ERA is a brand which has picked up and again, as new hotels will add, the touch wood, thanks to um, uh, uh, Ayodhya with the ERA by Orchid opening in February, that also revenue will come. But again, its benefit will not come in the quarter of four. Its benefit will start coming fully in the quarter of uh, one of next year's financial again. So as you have said rightly, because we were a stagnant company till last year, Okay, we were more concerned about cleaning up our balance sheet, coming out of financial problems, which Touchwood, today's Mitaji has just now explained. 
from a company where we were in uh, real challenges today we have come to a point where our ebitda to our debt ratio is 1 is to 1.3 so if that is the kind of situation we have come to and with all these efforts which we are taking the orchid dehradun the orchid chandigarh the orchid um, so many which are there in our list and presentation which i'll take up ahead so you will find our top line growing we have always given the same guidance which i will stick to is that this year will be flat and flattish with a minim minimal growth in terms of our top line and yes the ebitda which has fallen has fallen due to various reasons so that in the i share it again one is basically that things which were earlier interest has now become a lease rental so today if today my ebitda would have been better by around 4 cr if my lease rental of era orchid era by orchid mumbai would not have come as per indas in my uh, in my rental and would have gone in my interest paid to my lender but what have we done instead of that we have saved 6 crore rupees worth of interest and hence we are only paying 4 crore rupees worth of lease rental so that's why my ebitda may have gone down but my overall uh, cash flow and this thing is improved same way if i look at other excellentals which have come into play those will, uh, like uh, nashik uh, no no nashik sorry like kambaji nagar like um, jam nagar their rentals also are there so it's a gestation period and in a hotel initial few months are always there so we will get more than our fair share of return once these properties are full on steam like what we have seen right now similarly our many things we have done repairs and maintenance which are by the way not after the profit but before the ebitda so that also has already been captured we take all that and take it in our so what you actually see as ebitda is liquid cash it is not uh, an accounting thing it is liquid cash so all our expenses of repairs to building and whatever we have done that also has been gone there and then there are other things also like our whatever to expand you have to pay commissions to expand you have to pay various fees so we have all those expenses also which are part and help uh, or not help but have affected our ebitda and that is but natural and like we have given a guidance based on that guidance only it is so whatever we have said it is that if that is flattish it's because we have said it's flattish so i hope that answers your question sir yes sir uh, but in the sir wala i like appreciate the initiatives that you have taken uh but in the previous discussion i mean we had discussed uh, an ebitda of about uh, 100 cr in fy24 yes and you will come 100 cr i'm still standing by it the year is not over the year is not over sir and we have three months or other two months left it is not fair of me to speak about this quarter but i am sticking to what i said of 100 crore ebitda we have given the guidance over to achieve 100 crore to achieve that and it grows a bit so we would need to achieve about 32 to 35 crores in the last quarter sir i i think uh, that is realistic sir i i in fairness to others also i have answered your question that we will achieve how we will achieve is my problem you can question me in the next quarter but i am telling you that 100 i will achieve i will achieve and i have answered your question great sir and sir last question can we please discuss the other expenses i mean what components uh, go in that Because they have increased from around 26 year to 31 year, and also the finance cost, other expenses and the finance cost. Because uh, we, uh, as per the previous discussion, we were expecting about six year uh, interest cost in uh, quarterly going on uh, from Q3 onwards. So, can we please discuss these two components? Yes, sir. So basically, sir, the finance cost is based on basically the deal of ours transaction happening in October. so because of that it is not come down fully ideally if it would have happened for the full quarter i would have got the benefit of the finance cost for the full quarter but unfortunately or whatever it happened in the month of october endish so because of that the finance cost has to be calculated based on one month full being paid on 300 cr as compared to now for 172 cr and that is why you find that mismatch but it is as per accounting all right sir and should we expect this to go down to 6 cr keep on word it will be based on now sir 172.5 cr our interest outgo for this quarter coming will be based on a complete quarter is getting the benefit of 172.5 cr as our debt and sir what would be uh, i mean the uh, should should we expect the other ex expenses to continue in this range or should i mean was was this quarter A bit higher on 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 that front. 
Sir, the reaping is that many, accepts, many expenses which have happened recently in the last uh, quarter are based on basically an, uh, 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 just as we have had an extraordinary uh, profit because of the um, uh, extraordinary uh, event that has happened. So there is no further sale of any asset or anything on play. So we will not have any expenses related like that in relation to these things. So whatever we find the um, uh, uh, higher EBITDA down, it will not be there in the subsequent. It will be based on normal business working. So we will not find that uh, any extraordinary expenses coming around or anything like that. All right, sir. Go ahead. Uh, that's all for my side. I will come back and meet you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we will request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Runit Kapoor from Systematics Shares. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, first of all, congratulations on the Madhuri Palace expansion. So, I wanted to know, like, post the expansion, like, what would be your stake in the new hotel? Our stake will be, sir, fifty-one percent. Fifty-one percent, and so it will be it will be accounted as a JV, like, converted, like, you'll convert this subsidiary into a JV. Correct, sir. Okay. And uh, in uh, I read a recent article where uh, it mentioned like in you know, the Garden Ayodhya, you have you have plans to expand to three hotels. So is it an initial planning stage or like an advanced stage is regarding that? It is uh, one uh, one is in very much advanced stage. Two are in uh, uh, mid stage. Okay. But one is in a very much advanced stage where we are uh, very hopeful that if that happens, because as you must have all read, uh, yeah, we expected that 90,000, 80 to 90,000 people will come per day. Unfortunately and fortunately, that 5 lakh people are coming a day. I say unfortunately because the infrastructure is not able to cope with the demand. So whatever we bring and whatever we come in the next 3 to 5 years is all under capacity. That is why I say unfortunate because so many devotees want to come. People are willing to pay um, uh, very handsomely, but they are not able to get the facility. So that's why I say unfortunate. I wish that we, the nation was more prepared to see this fantastic uh, this thing. Even my own family is upset that they have not been able to go because the hotel is not ready. So I feel the point. Okay, and uh, sir, the question questions, was... Uh, sir, if you don't mind, sir, uh, let's give three have, we have done. Let's give someone else a chance. We'll come back, sir. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Shubham Rani from Green Portfolio. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Am I open? Namaskar. Yes, sir. Yeah, Namaskar, sir. Very good evening. I'm Shubham from Green Portfolio. Okay. Uh, so, first question is uh, regarding leases. As uh, in the last one call, uh, management discussed that our company uh, predominantly operates uh, in lease le business mainly. So, I just wanted to understand that. Uh, oh, Shubham, sir, you're leases. not audible. Uh, is, it, is it okay? There is echo. Sir, your voice is echoing. Okay, just a minute. Is it okay now? Hello. Hello. Yes. Am I is it okay? No, sir, still not. Uh, can you disconnect and rejoin again, please, sir? The next question is from the line of Amai from Banyan Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, on these uh, two or three more hotels uh, in Ayodhya, can you throw some light as to 
uh, uh, how big these hotels will be and what are the ARRs that you are targeting? So sir, uh, this is a 50 room hotel in Ayodhya, it's a lease model and uh, we expect this to do anywhere between uh, 7,000 to 10,000 is the uh, this thing though I don't think we'll be doing well uh, uh, it will be based and we are basically uh, since it's a new hotel we need to see the Saturday Sunday the weekend business but we assume this to be doing anywhere between seven to ten thousand in a comfortable range we don't believe as Kamath Group to take over advantage even if we are because we should be able to get a happy customer and repeat customer and a lot of our customers are basically groups like um, various um, travel agents large travel agents who we do tie up with across India. So we would not like to, uh, so we like to, while get our premium, we would not like to create a situation which leaves a bad taste. So we, keeping the market in mind and keeping our equation and the whole in mind, we will make sure that while we make money also, it's fair on the overall scenario. So that's why I would say 7 to 10, maybe it might go up also, but that depends. Uh, and sir, uh, two more hotels you talked about, uh, which are in the next step. So, any any color on how big these hotels will be? I'm sorry, sir. You want me to speak about the various hotels? No, no. The uh, other two hotels in Ayodhya, that Mr. Vittal Kamath spoke about in the interview. Yes, sir. In Ayodhya. In Ayodhya. Correct, right. sir. We have not formally signed with them. Okay, so once we formally sign with them, it would be more prudent on me to speak on that. Uh, it is uh, one is at the verge, but again, at the verge is not done till it is done. So till it is not an agreement, it would not be correct on me to comment on that in more detail. So these all will be leased hotels, right? Leased, sir. We uh, as a group, we have been focusing on lease uh, itself. And lease has been uh, the main thing because uh, even if you see in this JV, we did not look at deploying any um, uh, more um, liability on the company. It's a win-win uh, perspective. There are a few more opportunities like this because many people want our management. Many people want our man experience. Uh, but we are very clear that we would not like to participate with any uh, loans or any uh, uh, borrowings. And people are willing to actually, in fact, you will hear of more such JVs happening in the future where our sweat equity, our brand equity is, is leveraged rather than money because uh, there are others who have money, but they don't have the uh, product, they don't have the right partner or maybe they find us as the right partner. So more such will come in the future, sir. Uh, sure, sir. Just two more questions. Uh, one is on the Mahodadi uh, Palace Hotel. Uh, so All right, are... can you please join the queue? for further questions? Uh, sure. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Agarwal from Nivesha Investment Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So, sir, starting from the hospitality industry itself, right now, sir, everyone in the industry is uh, like, trying to add their room capacity either by adding additional fees in the same hotel or by constructing new hotels in order to cater to the demand that they are forcing. So don't you think in coming two to three years there would be excess supply of rooms? So can you give some color on how would be the demand and supply growth in coming two to three years going ahead from now? That's a very good question and it's a very pertinent question, especially for a multi-state uh, company like ours a challenge in certain markets where too many people are putting up a lot of property not by doing a proper study but by going on the basis of the feel in Corona. Um, at that time when there was no work from, when there was work from home, school from home, everything from home, a lot of resorts and leisure destinations especially had a superlative boom. Again, we will give you a best example is even within a city like Mumbai, at that time, due to Corona, the IPL was only between Mumbai and Pune. And because the Orchid Hotel Mumbai, Ira by Orchid Mumbai, and Orchid Hotel Pune, all three are situated and we have almost 1,000 rooms uh, between them, uh, 900 rooms between us and there, we benefited greatly. But now, IPL again this year was all over India, and again this year it will be all over India. So we will benefit limitedly, we will benefit reasonably. Same way in different markets, you have, we are very careful where are we entering. Leisure markets, we are not bullish on. We are, we are looking at every opportunity. Today, if I keep getting calls for, say, like a Jim Corbett, I will basically only take a property opportunity where my company does not have to overextend itself. 
we may not even go for a lease we may go for a management so every unit we are taking we are assessing the local market we are we could have grown much faster than we are growing but we are not interested in a want on expansion we are interested in a qualitative expansion that adds to our bottom line it may be patiently adding to our bottom line as rightly pointed out by our colleague before um, who asked a question that your bottom line top line hasn't grown that's because this year's uh, seeds we have planted will give us fruits to next year so same way we will grow but we will grow with ebitda in mind we will grow with qualitative experiences in mind we don't want to like uh, some of the hotel companies have done exceedingly well in adding number of rooms but the qualitative index is something that they as a management need to see is not as well. we are very happy in basically us having as commerce quality and at the same time profitability both i want i don't want only one or the other so that's why uh, we will grow with our limited manner in whatever we are doing but we will make sure that our shareholders and our customers are very importantly happy so that's how basically you are right that there could be but then there are some markets like mumbai uh, delhi uh bangalore some markets where there will be no matter how many rooms come there will not be that much of an issue because those markets are booming that way those markets have a innate demand in themselves just as today in mumbai some large hotel players have started some very large hotels but they haven't moved the needle for anybody in fact their needle has gone up i assume so why because mumbai as a city has that kind of appeal and has that kind of demand and that's why we are again very careful dehradun why did we take dehradun because dehradun is the city of the present not even the future as a state capital the government is taking lots of efforts over there also jamnagar being having reliance having naira having hpcl having the it is the it is on the single road that goes to dwarka that goes to somnath from there you can go so basically there is a strategic value not just a you know we are getting this opportunity so let's take it so whatever we have taken is taken with a thought that what is our future outlook of the next 10 years rather than a short term ki let's just add rooms so we haven't we could have since especially since we are giving lease we could have signed up 50 lease 25 lease the company doesn't have a shortage of funds but the company is very prudent with its funds to see which is the hotel how is it going to add value why did we take orchid toyam as a management and not a lease because we did find great potential in orchid toyam which is going to come up at pune in the next few months it's a luxury property 21 room all villa which we are looking at an arr of anywhere between 15 to 20000 but why did we not go for lease because while there's great opportunity it is too small for the company to really justify a good roi so we told the owner if you really want us as orchid brand will you consider a management contract we offered the owner and the owner was more than happy to take a management as compared to going for away from our normal trend of lease because we wanted to capture the opportunity but we know based on our company overheads based on our company's overall 21 rooms is not viable for us so that's why we took a management call so this i hope answers your question of what is the future outlook everyone needs to see case to case and what is our outlook on that thank you yeah yeah thanks for this insightful information sir and the second question would be sir like what kind of ebitda margin guidance will you expect sir in coming say like financially at 26 or 27 sir like what would be your guidance on that sir this year we have based on whatever guidance we gave last quarter that we will achieve our 100 crore ebitda we will achieve that target on a consolidated basis we may exceed that also but let's just stick to 100 i i agree sir like i am asking for the financial year 26 or 27 like what kind of ebitda margins we can expect sir like if we get in the 30 20 or like i i miss i'm sorry i i miss heard i'm sorry about that bp me thoda fumble hota hai um we expect to do an ebitda of next financial year i think we have given a broad guidance of around 140 of 35% of our top line which we estimate to be around 400 cr based on that you can calculate at around 140 Okay, it will be for financial at 25. I am correct that for financial at 26 or 27, any broad range that you can give sir? Uh, you mean to say next to next year? Yeah. Next to next year, sir, I don't have anything with me right now. One second, I don't have it. I'll not give you some bogus numbers. 
if we have it written down only i will tell you i know that next year we have a target of around 400 top line that's why based on that as a 30 35% it comes to around 120 to 140 k range way that's why i could give you that fair answer let me get back and maybe at this coming quarter and i can share with us uh, we will take out that and we will sure. huh thank you sir so sure, sure sir like one more question related to that sir sir like going for नमस्कार विशाल जी सबसे पहले तो you know it has been a super turn around so congratulations to you and the entire team and uh, secondly you know uh, more than the the near term numbers uh, what should be the strategy of the company now uh, in the sense that now you are completely free after a decade in your mind you were always very aggressive uh, in the past uh, and now you have been saying that you know you will not be stupidly aggressive but be very uh careful for the deploying of the funds but with the kind of tailwinds and jo overall bullishness hai india mein wo perspective se uh, what are your thoughts ki agle 3 4 saalon mein hum number of rooms number of hotels pe kahan pahunche honge sir thank you i really appreciate this turnaround would not have happened uh, if it wasn't for our team as i mentioned before the start also smita ji jaise jin jo log hai bahut matlab i tell you i am easy people like smita ji have taken it really and uh, burnt the midnight oil is an understatement and apart from that i also am grateful to all my past bankers whether they were from arc whether they were from the banking because unka bhi humko corona ke time pe bahut support tha sometimes sir my father always used to tell one dialogue when our family problem was on he used to say that you know some one of my uncles who did nothing for him so as my father i said पापा ये अंकल ने तो कुछ नहीं किया बोला कभी कभी कब कोई कुछ करता नहीं ना उसका सबसे ज्यादा सपोर्ट चाहिए बिकॉज यू डोंट सम्स वॉन्ट समी ब्रीदिंग डाउन योर नेक एंड दैट्स बेसिकली वॉट आर बैंक डेट दे सपोर्टेड अस बाय बीइंग पेशेंट एंड वी वर एबल टू फिनिश द करोना स्टॉम एंड आफ्टर दैट आई एम ग्रेटफुल टू आवर एग्जिस्टिंग लैंडर्स हु केम टूगेदर एंड डेड इट सो इट इट्स अ रियली अ बिग ग्रुप एफर्ट and then people like are you many of who are on call and i do know some people personally because i can see the names it's your patience over the last many you know more than decade that you all have observed us saying all that you are right that aggression is part of kamath we are known for our gango giri but at the same time the lessons of the past are very very important we are definitely growing as you can see but we are not just because we are sitting with a good uh, cash flow and ebitda we are not just signing up anywhere and everywhere we are very very particular what we are taking and we will grow and the main target also side by side you would notice is that we are sticking to our commitment which we have said for all this time to come net positive and working towards reducing our loans even further while growing so what this 172 figure it will come further down over a period of time we will be using our cash flows very judiciously and the main reason for that actually to uh, to be very frank sir is because it is better for us to today grow slowly nicely conservatively and keep money in hand so that when the right time some opportunities come that time we are ready to take those opportunities there is no reason for us today in this very bullish market to over uh, to wapis uh, load our balance sheet when we uh, and rather than that is you know keep our balance sheet light keep cash in hand also because there are opportunities which are going to come not all hospitality players on the surface everyone looks great but deep down even now not all hospitality players are still very good and just because now the next 2 3 years look bullish or the next 5 years look bullish doesn't mean that i will not get my turn to grow exponentially at the right time so it is better that we be prudent in our uh, approach today and in terms of growth definitely sir you can see that we are talking about 33% growth next year as of now we might even exceed that if we get more sign ups which obviously we are doing so in terms of number of rooms number of keys definitely today we are at approximately 2000 over the next 5 years in the same manner in which we are growing we should do you know 4000 5000 keys but that like i said number game is not the key a qualitative number game is definitely the key 
Fair enough. Uh, thank you, and uh, best of luck, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hello. Uh, if I may, one more. Sorry. Uh, hello. Can I? Yes. Yes. Please. Your second question. Yeah. So just, just one. This, this one thought was there because I've been, uh, you know, I think I heard your brother and father talking about the other Kamath group uh, areas. Would you like to just clarify, like, how big is the Kamath hotel restaurant business? And I know it has no connection to this, but uh, I'm just thinking from an angle that you know you have such good experience in running food chains also. So, uh, uh, like, just to understand the size that you have achieved in that area, uh, maybe in terms of revenues or something, a uh, ballpark, and how are the skill set beneficial to to this uh, hotel's business where uh, you can use the food uh, business learnings and and improve here? Because a lot of people find it difficult to run good restaurants within hotels. So firstly, um, I'd like to clarify that my father did not speak with my brother. My father would have spoken as chairman and managing director of Kamathodar Ninja Limited, which has nothing to do oh, with any know. other family member. I, I'm just, I'll just, I'll just complete, sir. Uh, uh, I was not talking. The, uh, I think uh, we heard it audibly. I was saying that on the YouTube there are a couple of videos of your father and a couple of videos of your brother. So I was just trying and I just uh, was searching about Kamath and I landed up there. Okay. I was coming from that reference. Sir, my also is good. Sir, you have also seen it, but you have seen it. So, I'm sorry. I did not say that. But, jokes apart, Dr. Kamath would have obviously spoken about restauranteering because at heart, as Kamath, we are hardcore restauranteers. Very nicely, correctly put by you that many hoteliers don't bother much about their restaurant because the margin per se is more in the rooms. But we believe just like some other famous chains are there who are known for their food and then automatically people go and stay with them. We believe that if we give a great experience overall, then you will enjoy overall. So, you function, you have a daughter's wedding, you have a function in your house, if you have a big then automatically you take my rooms also. So, food is very critical, we believe, but then there are other chains who don't, they have their own idea on the rooms, which is fine for them. Everybody, sir, has their own business model. We are basically, I, I as Executive Director of Kamath Hotels India Limited has only one job of this hotel company. I am only and only focused, as is my father as chairman, focused on our whatever comes within the Kamath Hotel purview. So I do not know because I have not invested even one minute in any other of our uh, other family related business because they have nothing to do with me. Uh, we, I am only responsible for this and I will be able to answer. But in your general perspective of f and we are Touchwood doing very well. We are doing exceedingly well in our banqueting at the Orchid Pune. We are doing exceedingly well in Orchid Mumbai. This last month we did a record sale. Uh, uh, I will not mention the figure, but I can tell you that we did a record sale in banquets in the Orchid Mumbai, which has been the highest ever. Considering that the Orchid Mumbai is having only maximum capacity of 600 to 800 people, which is today in Mumbai a very small capacity, but we have 14 halls, all small and big combined, but they are not a very large capacity and yet we did a record sale, so we had a very nice celebration with our team. So, f and is very important and it continues to remain important to us. The Orchid Jamnagar can do 3,000 people, two to 3,000 people ka event. That is basically why we are going to, we are, uh, you know, we have taken that. So, same way, many of our other places, wherever we have, um, you know, we are focused on F&B as a group. So, it helps, it does affect your EBITDA, by the way. If you are an all-room hotel, you technically can have a much higher EBITDA. But we are here for a holistic guest fulfillment of need and experience. So, that's why we keep the focus on the F&B. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Vivek Gautam from GS Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Basically, I just wanted to know when the entire sector is booming and every company is coming out with great set of numbers in the hotel sector, why our growth has been so poor and uh, how has been the occupancy rate and what are the plans for us to uh, improve it? And Kamath has gone through some very bad times in the past and uh, what has been the key learnings of it and uh, uh, how are we planning to cope up with it, sir? 
Sir, I have already answered this question without repeating too much about it. We did, we have always communicated this year will be flat. So, whatever is our numbers is what we have already communicated. We have never said this year we will do great bonanza of um, uh, growth because we have been very honest and transparent in our uh, guidance. So, we have said we will be flat and we will be flat only. This year, we will be flat. Next quarter also, to tell you in advance, we will be having a very marginal growth. It will not be an extraordinary growth. Not in sync with probably what you are expecting from us, which you should expect, but next year, not this year. So, if I have to tell you in terms of growth, we have done fair amount of growth in this uh, tough market uh, of um, uh, Mumbai also, where there is a heavy competition. Yet, we have had a significant growth of 8% in our ARR in Mumbai, in our Orchid Mumbai. We have had a 14% uh, growth in ARR uh, uh, year on year um, uh, uh, in ERA by Orchid and on a quarter on quarter we have had a 20% growth in ARR and if I have to compare on a 9 month basis we have had a 17% growth in ARR after converting it from its previous brand to ERA by Orchid Mumbai. So on a holistic basis in, in fact if you see if I, if I share with you I am very happy to say that we have a 14% average ARR growth across the group. And that's what I said. We are very much focused on qualitative customers because of what's the why you need first is to explain you why we are after higher ARR. Higher ARR is not just because of higher revenue. It's also because higher ARR leads to a different kind of spending of a clientele. If you are having a higher ARR customer, he is more dispensed towards spending in your other outlets. A lower ARR customer tends to bring his own F&B a higher spending ARR customer tends to use your own hotel guy friendly. That is basically why hotels aspire for a better ARR or average room rate because the indirect benefits of that customer's mindset are more than a lower ADR customer. And this is a this is the fact. This is the main point that why we aspire for a higher ARR. It is the same reason why we do not allow online travel agents uh, to coupon uh, buy the hotel for, for for couponing because of exactly this reason. When a lower ARR comes in because the customer pays low, though the hotel may be getting his higher uh, rates from the online agency, that customer comes and complains. Aapka chai menga hai, aapka khana menga hai, aapka hotel sahi nahi hai. But that's because he's used to spending lower. And when he comes to a higher category hotel, he does not have the ability of his mindset to spend in your other ancillaries. So, this higher ARR has actually helped transcend into the improved F&B services uh, or rather say improved F&B revenue. So, that is basically what we have seen in and what we have been focusing on. So, we have, as I said, sir, continued to do as per our guidance. Thank you. Sir, what is this ED issue? And uh, there was mentioned in the note to the account. The ED issue, you have submitted some amount, some amount is pending and the right of your Pune hotel subsidiary? No, no, sir, nothing to do with Pune or anything. I think you are mixing up the points. Uh, let me clarify for you, sir. The ED issue has nothing to do with uh, Pune. It is based on basically 2012 when we were in financial strains. Obviously, we were trying to sell many hotels. At that particular time, one of the persons came to us in 2013 and said, I will like to purchase your hotel. That time, at approximately 35 CR, a transaction was struck, but that person had to give a deposit, which was a deposit which would be which would be non-refundable if he backs out. And based on that, he gave a 3 crore deposit. Uh, there were many things which happened in the middle. I will shortcut that. And eventually, that person did not show up to consummate this transaction. So, when we did not come to consummate this transaction in 2014, as per accounting standards, we have taken it in our balance sheet also. And that's how this 3 crore was forfeited. Though the company got 3 crore, the company did not benefit because the company wanted to sell this asset and pay off the loan which it was having against it. But unfortunately, because of that, it did not happen and went NTA. Cut to, to 2000 and now recent times when this ED investigation was on, that we subsequently learned why this gentleman disappeared was because he was part of a chit fund company. And this chit fund company basically... Uh, was once was cracked down on. Obviously, this man went in communicado and other things, and that's how basically the so the ED said that because firstly the ED investigated us and they thought that we are also an accomplice or a hand in glove, but their investigations proved 
that we are not an accomplice and that is why we were never charge sheeted the company i must be i'm very happy to tell you we are not charge sheeted we are not an accused we are just one of the people mentioned in their transactional list and in that transactional list it is said that this 3 crore rupees which was an advance given to us should be returned because the deal was not consummated we and our legal opinion was very clear that ours was a legitimate transaction you have investigated us in full detail and found that it is a legitimate transaction and based on that this is not, uh, as the proceeds of crime is always basically if there some quid pro quo but if it's a genuine legitimate transaction then it is not a proceeds of crime there are enough rulings on this and unfortunately in the the case of ed obviously the tribunal always first favors that and then eventually you will go and you will get the uh, justice in the higher courts but the lower courts are always going to be favorable to the um, department okay we understand that and basically based on that there was a mistake based on the mistake of calculating and other things this whole thing became a 15 crore thing which by the way we are not given to ed we have deposited in bombay high court which will eventually 3 crore will be kept still and the balance will come back to the company but it's a matter of due process of law so this is in a nutshell i have given you what is the thing so neither anywhere we are charge sheeted neither anywhere is anybody been called an accused or anything like that so it's a genuine business transaction unfortunately today in india not only us but every single hotel company wherever people from various chief funds have stayed those people have got either notice to produce documents and even other people who ever have done any kind of business with them so it's it is something we have to live with as part of doing business there is no point in me saying anything on it but the good part is that natural justice will prevail it's only about delayed not denied will my fee explain sir and the subsidiary company went through a very bad time through covid and now the turn around is happening and hopefully future is looking like good thank you sir thank you i am very proud of our team and uh, next year you will be very happy and i am sure you only will give us the uh, pat on back for the excellent percentage growth thank you sir thank you very much sir thank you very much the next question is from the line of manoj saraf from kiva advisor please go ahead uh hi sir thank you for the opportunity uh i had two questions one was in the notes to account there uh the the mm-hmm. ncds that we had raised uh of 297 crores uh in that it says the money was used uh, for the company as well as there was some uh, also some amount used to, uh, to the company belonging to the promoters if you can just share that amount uh as well as uh, another question was the operating expenses uh, maybe it is already asked that was there a special one off in this quarter in the operating expenses and that should change from uh, from the next quarter and uh, if i can just squeeze one that if uh, given our ebitda can we look at a net uh, net debt free company in the next two years so sir firstly i think um, i i am i am i can assure you that the entire 297 which was there has gone towards repayment of the kamas hotel india limited and the promoter has not got any money nor promoter entities have got any money from that it has entirely gone into the restructuring and the repayment of our lenders that i can assure you so i do not i think what you might be referring to is that there are promoters who have got warrants along with the investors and that basically the promoter is infusing capital into the company so it is not that the promoter has got anything the promoter does not need anything the our whole soul and focus was basically to turn down the company and all that money has gone into that so if you have anything particular you want to highlight you can uh, please uh, email it to smita Uh, dot nanda at khil dot com k h i l dot com and we can also uh, or you can send it to c s at khil dot com we can check that because I can assure you that that info of yours is not accurate maybe it's a misreading or a misinterpretation and uh, so second question what was your thing in short I was uh, the second was that given our beta can we be net debt uh, positive or net cash in the next two years at the end of next Two years. So we sir intend to be net positive by latest next year. 
not even in two years from now, because if our guidance, uh, more than our guidance, if our, um, um, if we beat our guidance, we will, within the next, not even one year, uh, we should be net positive. So it's a matter of basically now us putting our efforts in the right place and that's resulting into that. So I think what your uh, expectation from us of two years will more than comfortably be achieved. Excellent. So in the operating expense uh, point, uh, was there a special one-off in this quarter? Because the, the operating leverage did not really play out because our top line was flattish. Where the, I guess that was because of the era hotel sale on a like-to-like -like basis. But I think as you mentioned, the like-to-like -like ARR growth was 8-10%. Uh, so maybe just because of the like-to-like. So if you can share the like to like a ARR growth, maybe if you want, and but more so the operating expenses was there an exceptional in this quarter? So sir, um, basically uh, the growth, like I mentioned, of ERA by Orkin Mumbai was 17% on a year-on-year -year, nine-month basis. Okay, and this is also considering that ERA by Orkin was only converted on 1st of July. So only six months of that actually is the uh, main uh, growth of uh, ERA by uh, Orchid, uh, uh, you know, in terms of its brand change and upgradation. And if I have to say broadly, in terms of um, the um, overall um, perspective, we found that after us doing it in July, there has been a significant jump. Um, the preceding months of July, if I was to compare July to July, that is July 23 to July 22, there was an 18 to 19% jump, 18.5% jump in your July figures. There was a 26% jump in our August ARR. There was a 15.1% jump in our September figure. And in our October, there was a 28.6% jump. So holistically, if you see, our overall ARR jump after converting to ERA month on month, if I was to compare to month on month, has been exceedingly well uh, appreciated by the customers in the market and that's basically what reflection we see and uh, so i think so i think that answers your question right so the uh -huh. operating expense is there an exceptional item in this quarter See, not the sale of assets we you only answered that the sale of era was the exceptional item sir no no the operating expenses was the can you say any Amount was exceptional operating expenses? In this? No, there is, there is no exceptional operating expenses mentioned or accounted for, for this quarter or last year. Okay. Why I, I, I was asking about the ARR for the consolidated company because our top line growth was 2.8%. So I was saying that ERA must have been that. So if you know, uh, if you can share in the presentation or if you can share now, what was the ARR of X ERA all the hotels? Sir, in have our investor presentation in detail, there is on page, six of, uh, on page 6 is there, sir, of our presentation is one where we've shown the brand launch and the ADR growth of Bhubaneswar, ERA by Orchid conversion, of Mumbai, ERA by Orchid conversion, of Nasik also. Uh, Nasik, actually, we had a double whammy in the case of Nasik. One is that the company spent approximately 2 crores. On top of that, the company had an EBITDA burden of approximately for three months of approximately one and a half CR. So we have that also double whammy in our, uh, this thing. One of the reasons why EBITDA has gone down is because of this conversion, which was majorly there in this uh, month of, uh, in these three months which shut. So that's why, you know, which Nagar Nira, uh, which was earlier Camp Hotel, was having a profit. But here we did not fire any staff. We relocated them and all our expenses were on. So that's why we did have a double whammy of CapEx, OPEX, and routine, uh, your normal hotel expenses. But the turnaround of that, like I said, the growth in ARR from 2200 to 37, 36, 4000 is the average it is going. That jump has been fantastic. So that shows confidence that the customers and we have in the brand and they've seen it. So that all is there in our presentation, page six onwards, page seven, and various pages. So, you can see that, yes, sir. It's reported. I'll take it offline with them. Thank you so much and wish you all the best. And we can see the orchid back to its former. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Trisha Kansara 
from molecules please go ahead hello uh thank you for giving me this opportunity sir my first question was regarding the recent uh, agreement that you signed with constrict hospitality so you mentioned that you own 51% of the uh, joint venture that has been formed uh, but my question is regarding the infusion so um, in the first place uh, constrict will invest around 26 crores but uh, i wanted to know about the infusion in the second phase you mentioned the amount which is 47 crores but uh, how will this infusion pan out will will there be any infusion from kamath pen or the entire infusion will come from the other party that is my first question so stand your second question yeah so my second question is regarding warrants uh, so uh, when can we expect the remaining amount of warrants to come Yeah, uh, these are my two questions. So uh, the first question uh, is basically very easy. That uh, we basically are getting this infusion based on which there will be a banquet hall, very large banquet hall. There will be four restaurants, um, and there will be thirty-three rooms active, and there will be a lot of internal accruals generated from this in the eighteen months to twenty-four months that the uh, hotel will take for the second phase of forty-seven crore rupees. so initially there will be internal accrual generated by the company uh, by this by this entity mahodari palace of which kamath hotel is 51% owner this internal accrual will be utilized to reduce that 47 down and the balance subsequent which is there will be a mix of loan and equity infusion to be jointly discussed when that uh, time comes so we have kept that open ended where by uh, both might either we may put our own equity based on whatever if his equity is not too much required or we may take a loan on that entity because it will be a stand alone serviceable entity we don't foresee it to be a very large requirement because the things which i mentioned to you itself will generate a fantastic ebitda from uh, operations so that's basically the idea and to also oh, sorry, sorry your warrants question so your warrants basically madam uh, the warrants will are due in the next july 20 4 so the warrants are due july 24 so we will have to probably be patient and wait till july 24 because the that that as per whatever time as per say we guide like okay thank you thank you thank you thank you very much due to time constraint that was the last question i will now like to hand the conference over to mr vishal vitil kamat for closing comments uh we are very uh, grateful for all of your patient hearing uh, we would like to continue to answer any queries you may have you can please feel free to contact us uh, directly at mr with mr nikhil singh or smita nanda ji or us but especially many of you know our our um, ey team and uh, they will also be very happy they know more than me at times because they are more involved so they will be more prudent in answering whatever questions you have and we look forward to your continued support and blessing thank you everyone thank you namaskar on behalf of kamath hotels india limited that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you